Okay. So I'm so excited to have Mary here with us. Um, Mary started her coaching journey over a year ago. Has it been like 18 months, Mary? Around 18 yeah. months? Yeah. And um, she came out really strong. She then had a little setback, which I'm not, I don't want to share too much. I don't know what she's going to share with you guys about her, her own story. Um, but she just did um, the March Diamond Dash. It was like Keith Callahan and a bunch of other um, elite coaches. And she took the training on social media and literally changed her business overnight. So like she implemented everything that they taught her and she's going to show you like some before and afters of her posting. Um, so you guys will see what I'm talking about, but I literally watched her like just blow up her social media overnight where she just really was able to come out and be herself and be vulnerable and really share her journey. Um, not that she wasn't genuine, but just vulnerable, vulnerable, fully, <laughs> is that a word? But to just be really vulnerable and relatable. Um, so you guys will see that as she goes. So I wanted her to come and talk to us because from doing that, she hit success club 10 last month. I think it was the first time she's ever hit success club 10. Is that right, Mary? Yeah. So she hit success club 10 for the first time ever. And on top of that, it was the first time she's hit success club. Um, in a year, in a year, in a year. So this is some really good stuff. Um, and I'm excited to have her share with us. And this is her, is this the first time you're leading a team call, Mary? I think so. I mean, I talked to you about how I became certified as a bar instructor, but that was just a personal anecdote. So yes, this is the first. Yeah. And we had some other people on. So this is like our first training with Mary, which is yeah. exciting. Yeah. All right, Mary, I'm going to mute myself. All right. And you can take it away. Okay. Hi guys. Um, so it's really awkward for me to be talking to you because I feel like I'm definitely not the social media guru. And actually I was saying this to my husband. I'm like, so I'm doing a training on social media. Isn't that kind of funny? Um, but I think as like, as I've been composing what I want to say and I will try to be coherent and make sense. Um, it's not just one piece of the training that kind of stuck with me and helped me create better posts. It was more all of the thinking and all of the training that um, the learning that I've been doing for the past year and a half. Um, and as Christy said, last March, so over a year ago, it was um, March of 2016, um, a girl that I've known, a girl, a woman that I've known since the seventh grade told me that my posts were annoying um, and that I should post everything about Beachbody on my business page and not clutter my Facebook personal page with stuff about Beachbody. Um, and so that really hurt. And in addition, my mom sometimes gets a little cranky when I post on Facebook and I'm not texting her, I'm not calling her. So um, those are the two major things which kind of put me in a funk um, and really made me start to think about my posts and um, was I being valuable? Um, and I mean, as I think about it now and I look back on my posts, they, I was posting, but it really didn't have a lot of substance. It didn't really have a lot of the why. And I think because I was really struggling with my why, there were some coaches that I was following that I wasn't connecting with. Um, and so this group that I did that Christy talked about with Keith Callahan and Amy Silverman and Megan and Wendy Joe and Pat and Raina um, really resonated with me. They are the coaches that I kind of want to be, not because they're successful, but because I feel like they're really leading with their heart. Um, and I feel that in listening to them, they gave me permission to be me. And so I think that is the root of where the posts came from is that I now had permission to have my own story. I didn't go, I, I didn't have a huge weight loss transformation. So that's not my transformation story. Um, 
my transformation story is more internal and more, I just became more confident in myself. And so hearing that um, I didn't have to have a huge weight loss story really helped me. Um, learning that it's okay that I am a bar instructor and I'm passionate about bar, but I'm also a beach body coach. And that I could be both, I didn't have to be one or the other, really helped me kind of think more about what I wanted to share with the world. Um, and hearing all these elite coaches and Christy and everybody else say, you're going to hear no's, people are not going to like you. It just kind of helped me feel like, oh, okay, I'm not in this alone. There are people out there to support me. So I think why I'm saying all of this is that that's kind of the foundation of where all of this came from. Um, I'm somebody that I, I need validation, which I'm trying not to need validation, but I just need kind of permission to be myself. Um, so I was given that permission and hence we have better posts. So now I'm going to open my PowerPoint presentation because I'm a nerd, um, which is fine because I'm me. And if you want like nerds then you're going to love me. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. I figured out how I could do this, but I need to see you and I need to see the screen. So let me know if you can't see this. Okay. I have no idea what you're seeing. Can you guys see the PowerPoint? How do I know if you're seeing the PowerPoint? I lost my chat. Hold on one second. We can see it. You can see it. Okay, thank you for saying something. <laughs> um, I don't want to leave this. Okay, so here we go, because I'm a nerd. Um, so these were some of my original posts. Um, they're not bad, but they're not valuable. Like, ooh, yay, Mary had a cafe latte, Shakeology, for lunch. I mean, when I put it's what's for lunch, I was trying to be silly, trying to kind of make fun of myself. This is probably like the 20th Shakeology post I had posted that month. And so I had kind of lost the um, flair and I just was trying to make fun of myself. Um, but what does it say about me, really? Nothing except Mary's having Shakeology for lunch, which what does that mean? And I will say that through all these trainings, I realized that we can't always just use the terminology of Beachbody because people don't always understand what is a challenge pack, what is Shakeology, what is BOD, I don't know, um, as somebody who isn't a beach body coach. And then this one that has the little elephant with the don't forget, I mean, it's cute, but again, you know, we're told not to be salesy, and this could kind of be perceived as being salesy, or, oh, Mary's just trying to get me to be one of her customers, and she's just trying to sell me something. And then we look at some of these other posts where, okay, yeah, everything that they tell us not to do. Um, stock pictures from our back office. I really like the Shakeology one, so I still do sometimes still use this one. But there's the, the challenge pack thing that we get on our coach's online office. And really, again, what value is this? Um, and I've listed things that you could buy so again, not a whole lot of value, not really telling people how has 21 Day Fix affected me, how has Shakeology affected me. And here's another one, because you know I really wanted to make Success Club. So let's just find more stock photos, and let's just try to you know, sell more stuff, um, and we're not selling things. So went through the training um, in March, and um, I will get to the meat of what got me here, but then this was one of my posts um, from I think about a month ago. I was in Target, I was trying on bathing suits, I hate myself in bikinis, um, but I was like, oh wow, I kind of look good. Um, I always see myself with big hips. I know I don't have big hips, I know I'm not fat, um, but body image is something that I have struggled with my entire life. And so I actually stood in front of the mirror at Target and I was like, oh my gosh, I still don't like my thighs, but look, I don't look huge in this bikini. I think I'm going to take a picture, and this could be one of my epic posts that Wendy Joe Spencer was talking about. And so then I tried to add some good content. I tried to dig deep into who I am. Um, Haley Christian talks about using 
emojis and pictures in your post to kind of take away from just all of the text. So that's why you see some kind of fun pictures. Um, that is one post that I did, a, um, like I said, about a month, month and a half ago. And then this is a post, you can't really see it because the text is so small, um, but this really talks about my why. Um, and what brought this about is I had a really nice conversation with a lady at the bar studio. We were talking about her daughters and body image and um, just our both of us being on a health and fitness journey. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was doing a workout and I was like, this is my why. And I need to tell people and I need to really, again, dig deep. And um, I think this post that says, when your why is big enough, you will find your how. I think I had like 83-ish to 90 um, people like it. And I had a number of people respond to it. So um, I was like, okay, I think that this is what I really need to do. So how did I get here? The, the content of this call. Um, these are the questions that Wendy Joe. so Wendy Joe Spencer is one of the elite coaches that led um, the, the Diamond Dash in March. Um, and these are the things that she really had us think about. And she said, this is your homework assignment. I want you to think about these questions. I want you to actually find answers. And so Jory and I messaged each other and we made a commitment to answer these questions and send them, send the answers to one another by Friday. And we both actually honored that commitment. And um, it was because I sent it to Jory and Chrissy and I sent it to Wendy Jo that I was really able to kind of fine tune what these are. So what I suggest you do is do what Jory and I did. Take this as a serious homework assignment. What are the top three things you want to be known for in your market? What, and list them in the order of importance. So what sets you apart from all the other, how many is it, like 100,000 Beachbody coaches? Um, and dig deep. Your story is not my story. My story is not your story, and that's what makes us unique. And what I learned from Amy Silverman is that you are going to attract the people that resonate with you. So the people that you, that you attract and I attract aren't going to be the same necessarily, and that's okay because we want our tribe to resonate with us. So what are the top three things you want to be known for in your market? What are the top three needs of your ideal customer and of your ideal coach? And this is where I'm still kind of challenged. I don't know who my ideal customer or my ideal coach is because I want to help everybody. And I, I am in my 40s, so I feel like my market has kind of moved away from the youngish crowd sometimes, although I have never been pregnant. So then I think, well, maybe the younger people will say, oh, hey, Mary might have an answer for me. So that's why I really need to think about my ideal customer. So think about the top three needs of your ideal customer. Whoever my ideal customer is, I know that um, they want to know how to eat healthy. They want to know how to have a healthy lifestyle. Um, and I feel like they need to know that it's okay to not be perfect 24-7 that it's okay to have a french fry every now and then, it's okay to have a glass of wine, and that you're not ruining your health and fitness journey. What are the top seven questions your ideal customer is searching for? Um, and what are the answers that you have for them? And that's where in your posts, you need to really dig deep and find how does your post connect to Beachbody without saying Beachbody. Um, how does your post connect with you and connect with your transformation journey, connect with who you are as a person? Because people want to know you beyond Shakeology, 21 Day Fix, Pio, P90X. They want to know that you're a mom or a student. Um, they want to know what you've struggled with, what you are successful with. Um, they don't want perfection. And that is something that I really learned in this group is that my posts can't be all about how I'm perfect. So sometimes I drink soda and I go to McDonald's. And so I might take a picture of myself drinking a soda pop and I'll post something silly about me drinking a soda pop. Um, I also am obsessed with wine and M&Ms. And so if I have a bad night with wine and M&Ms, 
I may post about that um, just so that people know that I'm not perfect. Who or what is a common enemy that you can attack? What I have thought about is what, um, what is my ideal customer going to think? Um, what is a common misnomer in terms of my health and fitness? And since I am in my 40s, can't believe I'm still saying that, um, you can be healthy and fit in your 40s. Um, and so I haven't yet identified an epic post to talk about this because I still have a little bit of perfectionist in me, which um, it was either Megan or Wendy said, you're not being a perfectionist, you're being a procrastinator. And yes, I want everything to be perfect um, because I don't want to make a mistake. So um, I haven't quite nailed that one, but I'm working on it. Any questions? Am I making sense? There's a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. Feedback is great. I'm over here shaking my head, but it's great. I can't see you. I, I don't know what happened to your faces. No, you're doing great. It's making sense. Um, and so, and the, the file that's in the Team Alpha Omega has this very concisely. It, it actually has the information here on this slide on a Word doc. Um, so she suggests that four times a week you post about your epic post, which is about your answers to number one. That these are long, excuse the expression, ass posts. My husband rolls his eyes every time I read him one. Um, but it's like you're telling a story. You're giving a lesson and you're solving a problem. So um, like the one with my bikini picture. I talked about um, having bad self-image, not liking being in a bikini, and then um, how beach body and being a bar instructor kind of helped me see myself differently because now I feel better on the inside and I'm eating better. And when I see myself, I see something different that I, I think I say that I somewhat like because I still see my flaws. And then two times a week, you should talk about your position too. And so position two would be the top three needs of your ideal customer. So this is when you're really trying to emphasize um, what do you need as my customer and how can I give that to you? So a lot of times I will talk about um, that I want people to feel better about themselves, that I want them to see themselves and somewhat like themselves. So I kind of use the same language that I used for myself. I use that for my um, potential I don't like the word customer for my potential um, tribe, we'll say. And then once a week, you should talk about position three, which is the top seven questions your ideal customer is searching. Um, what, what answers do they want? So you have the answer. And once a week, you should be posting about this. She suggested a video every day of two to seven minute max. I have definitely not fulfilled this obligation. Um, you should be answering those questions short or long and at least three times a week be an advocate and post about the common enemy. So where my common enemy is that you um, have to be young to be fit. I should be posting three times a week about how this isn't necessarily true, how you can be um, middle-aged, oh my God, I'm middle-aged and still be healthy and fit. She also said um, that you should do this consistently, and I actually have, have done this. Look at your posts. What is attracting a lot of attention? What is not attracting a lot of attention? And if you want to get a lot of attention, then you want to make sure that you are posting about things that people are interested about. So anytime I post about my daughter, um, I call her baby doll. Her real name is Abigail. Um, it's like the whole world is like glued to the screen because she's just so freaking adorable. I'm sorry. Um, I'm biased. Um, so I know that I need to post more about her. And it's not necessarily so that I can sell a product. It's so that more people are paying attention to what I'm doing. And then they will pop up on my timeline and then I will go to their timeline and I will like their stuff and I will message them. Um, and they will see what I'm doing 
And um, I've actually been having a Facebook Messenger conversation with a bar instructor in New Jersey, not for Extend, but for a different company. Um, and she actually said to me, oh, I see that you use Shakeology. I'm really curious about it. Uh, what can you tell me about it? Out of the blue, some random lady is leaving me a Facebook Messenger because I was choosing to be more vulnerable and talking more about openly about Shakeology. I think one of the things that held me back in the beginning is that I was, I felt like I, I needed to be either a bar instructor or a beach body coach, that I couldn't be both. And so if I was posting about bar, then I wasn't posting about beach body. If I was posting about beach body, then I wasn't posting about bar. Um, and then I was like, you know what? That's silliness. I am who I am. I'm a bar instructor. I'm obsessed with bar. And I also am a beach body coach and I'm obsessed with Shakeology and Autumn Calibries. So we need to just be real and put myself out there. And so I think because I am less nervous to talk about both, I'm getting more attention in my posts. So things that I consider when I am creating a post. Um, really incorporating my why into most of my posts, or at least link to my why. So I try not to, in every single post, talk about body image issues because, okay, Mary, we get it. And I don't want people just to feel like they need to validate me or boost me up um, because that's really not why I'm sharing my story. But I can always talk about how important health and fitness is to me and how it has kind of changed my life and given me flexibility to stay home and be with my daughter more. Um, talking about how this journey has transformed me. Um, because without doing this, people are going to be like, okay, Mary, one more selfie of you in your workout clothes, selfish, narcissist. And that's definitely not what I want people to say. So I always try to, um, talk about why without saying why, if that makes sense. Um, I need to remember that I'm making an impression on people with my posts and what do I want them to read and see about me? So what do I want them to know about me when they read a post? Again, I don't want them to always think that I'm like bothered about my body. I want them to know that I'm a mom and a wife and a daughter and I love spending time with my friends and I love to travel. Um, and then I do have mom guilt. So just what do I want people to know about me? What do I think might resonate with others? And looking at my entire day, uh, the deeper parts of my day and try to make it into a post. I was at my daughter's dance class and she and this um, little boy were running around because my daughter um, has endless amount of energy. She was wearing her tutu, her hair is curly, and she was sliding into home base because this little boy was teaching her how to slide into home base. And I said to one of the moms, I said, you know, um, before I became a mom, I always wanted a little girl with curly brown hair who wore a tutu, but also was kind of athletic. And she's a beach body coach. And she said, Mary, that's a post. She's like, tell people. And I was like, oh, that's so easy. So it doesn't always have to just be these deep, meaningful five page posts, but it has to be deeper about me and what's important to me. I take so many pictures in the day because I'm like, oh, this could be a fun post or, oh, that could be a fun post. But I don't use them all because seriously, people don't need to know about every aspect of my life. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm being valuable and not just cluttering my timeline and other people's timeline. Because as hard as it was to hear the, the comment from my friend, um, I think my posts were not very valuable. And I really wasn't giving a lot of content. So I've really tried to give more content. And I think because I've tried to give more content, more people are interested in what I have to say. Oh, and something that I should tell you. Um, I was never popular in high school. Um, but a lot of the popular people in high school um, are responding to my posts or liking my posts. And when I say thanks for the love, they're like, Mary, we're so proud of you. We're so happy that you're that you're so happy, you look great, you look so happy, you look so healthy. Um, and so I feel like that's kind of a little win for me and that has helped me be confident. But it's because I'm sharing who I am um, and they're seeing who I really am. 
I do try to be random and silly from time to time because I am very reserved. So like when I wear socks with flip flops, I'm going to take a picture and post it because that's just silliness. Um, and I need to show myself not being perfect. If anything I say, I'm trying to be more open and I'm trying not to let previous negative comments from friends and family get to me. Um, I think for about what a year, um, my friend's comments were in my head and my mom's comments were in my head. And, um, anytime I went to post, I'm like, Oh my gosh, what's Holly going to say? Oh my gosh, what's my mom going to say? Oh my gosh. And it was like, you know what? It doesn't matter because this is me. And if people don't like me, poo poo on them. Um, here we talk about, I talk about emojis and pictures to enhance your words. And I talk about being creative. I am extremely literal. So it's sometimes hard for me to find emojis and pictures um, because there might not be one. But instead of using a picture of a bum, you could use a picture of a peach. Or instead of saying words like C-R-A-P, you could use the poop emoji, which I know um, Eleni does from Fit Mama. Um, and it is kind of fun. You do kind of start to think creatively and look at all the fun little pictures and emojis that you can use. Um, and when you look at your own posts, they just look more appealing. Um, really thinking about my why and incorporating that to my posts. How has my life changed? i uh, been influenced by my health and fitness. How can I incorporate bar and beach body? I can't take away that I am a bar instructor and love it. So I just need to incorporate it into me being a beach body coach um, and health and fitness um, lover. Um, here we talk about looking to see what people like and don't like and then tweaking my posts. And then I have seen more activity on my leg page and I haven't done anything with my leg page in a long time, but every, so, like every week I see on my Facebook you've had so, so many new views. So I'm thinking, oh, people are liking my Facebook, my personal page. And then when they look for me, they're seeing that, oh, she has this like page. So they're going there. So I, um, Ariel was talking about your like, our like pages. Um, the more personal likes you get, people are going to start looking for you. And then I think that's when our like pages are going to get um, more traveled. I try not to be salesy. Again, that's what I learned in my training is just really making it very meaningful, valuable content. Um, and when I had my nine to five, my favorite mantra was purposeful and intentional. And I think I need to go back to that. And what I've tried to do is to go back to that purposeful and intentional um, mantra when I do my posts. And Chrissy was actually very helpful with this too. She's like, Mary, a lot of times you have Shakeology as a meal, but we don't know that because you're not telling us that. You're just saying, hey, look at my shake. Um, so I do try to add some content. And I think that might be why some people have reached out to me to say, hey, Shakeology, tell me more about this. Um, my nutrition is off. What should I be doing? Again, because I'm putting myself out there. Um, and this... I think this is one of the last slides. Get out of my own way. I'm always in my way because I always want to be perfect. I'm always overanalyzing everything um, and then telling the negative voices in my head to go away. And I did actually use all caps because I do yell at myself um, because sometimes it becomes such an obstacle that I just need to get out of my own way and just do it. Another thing that helped me, and I know that people – our coaches and everybody harp on this. Um, and I didn't really do it in the beginning. And it wasn't until I started doing this March dash that I really found value. Um, I was like, Oh wow, this personal development stuff, it does work. Every time I listen to the national wake up call, listen to a book on tape, um, or read something. I listen to Darren daily every day. Um, currently I'm listening to the five second rule by Mel Robbins. You, you just feel more motivated. You feel um, energy rising within you. And then I'm like, oh, that post that I wanted to do about this. Oh, here we go. Let me talk into my phone. And then I can not text and drive, but I can multitask and I can get my, my thoughts out 
Um, and then when I am able to, to sit and spend hours on a post, it still takes me a long time to do posts. Um, I have thoughts written down. Um, and also too, some, um, I guess a suggestion is if you are doing your personal development and something resonates with you, or you feel like it's something that could be a post, just post it. Um, again, it doesn't have to be, this isn't rocket science. We're just motivating people. We're sharing our journey and we are being vulnerable. And yes, it's very hard. I am still not as vulnerable probably as I should be. I'm not posting as much as I should be. I'm not totally following Wendy's um, schedule, but I, that's my goal. My goal is to follow that schedule, to be live with some con content that makes sense um, and to continue doing posts that resonate with people that make sense and that um, help me find my tribe. So that's really all that I have. Um, like I said, I posted this Team Alpha Omega training in our group. So if anybody wants to download it, um, I don't know, Ariel, if you have access to this, so I can email you this if you would like to have it um, for your team. And I can give you guys a copy of my PowerPoint, but um, this stuff gives, these are the notes that I actually took while listening to Wendy Jo Spencer on the call. I just took away some of the, the mumbo jumbo that I had written down. But if, if you do wanna do your homework assignment, this would be your homework assignment. Mary, this is awesome. Before you close this out, could you read to us your bikini post? Yeah. Um, because I remember it. Like, yeah. You know. So, yeah, let me just get rid of you. Okay, there we go. Um, I am always nervous to post pictures of myself in outfits like this because I don't want people thinking I'm conceited or self-centered. But today I am choosing to post this pic because I hate shopping for bathing suits as I have never liked what I saw in the mirror and I have always been self-conscious of what other people think. Yes, a common theme in my life. Well, today I'm trying on a new suit for summer. Yes, I'm ignoring the impending storm we have coming this weekend. I kind of liked what I saw. Still not a fan of the cellulite I see on my thighs, but kind of a fan of the rest. My health and fitness journey as a bar instructor and beach body coach have helped me kind of like what I see, and it's a great feeling. I eat real food, and I still enjoy my wine, but I'm focused, disciplined, and determined to stay on my journey. And then... Yeah, read us that one, too. Okay, hold on. I like this. I'm just going <laughs> to close out, because I have to find it. Well, that's what we had for dinner tonight. <laughs> Okay. See, this is like extremely vulnerable. You're seeing all of my, mm -hmm. okay, here we go. So this is my why post. A year ago, I experienced a setback as health and fitness coach when it was made aware that my post and outreach annoyed and offended a few of my Facebook friends. As a reserved person I am, I retreated into my shell. I needed to protect myself and lick my wounds. At this point, I found myself redefining my why and questioning if all of this was worth it. I started comparing myself to other more successful coaches as I thought their why had to be my why. However, it didn't feel right, and in fact, it felt like I was trying to put a square peg into a round hole. My why was different. My why does not center around losing a bunch of weight after pregnancy because due to infertility, I have never been pregnant, but I had a hard time identifying my why and putting it into words. Today, my why smacked me in the face as I talked with a woman who was beautiful inside and out, but she compares herself to other women she views as thinner. It broke my heart because for most of my life, I too have struggled with my body image. And as you know, I too have and still do compare my body to others. In high school, I wanted a different body, less curvy hips, smaller thighs and butt, bigger boobs, straight and bouncy hair. I wanted to look like the popular girls because I thought that would make me cooler. I thought that would get me asked out on dates. I thought that would get me an invitation to parties. This is my why. 
I focus on health and fitness as a beach body coach and bar instructor so I can help people feel good about themselves so I can help them find beauty when they look in the mirror so they stop comparing themselves to others or what society portrays as beautiful. No, I am not perfect. I have not mastered the art of loving what I see in the mirror, nor have I mastered the art of not comparing. I still struggle with body image. I know I am not fat, but I still look at myself in the mirror and see my curves and cellulite. I wish for a different body sometimes, but not like I used to. I like my body most of the time, which is so different from before. My experience with Byron Beach Body has been a huge factor in this mind shift. In talking with the woman today, I wanted to cry because she's beautiful inside and out. She inspires, she loves, she motivates, she challenges herself to live a healthier lifestyle. She had dedicated herself to exercising to improve her mind and body, but she compares herself to others, and she doesn't always like what she sees in the mirror. This is my why. This is why I will put myself out there and risk the comments so that people know they can come to me for guidance and comfort on this journey so people can open their eyes one day and love the person they are inside and out. Um, so that one, like I said, I think, I think 83 ish people, Chrissy, you're crying. <laughs> um, and so I try to do, a, I call this my epic post once a week, just because I, they they take me so long to write cause I'm <laughs> just a dork. Um, this past week on Thursday, we were sitting in the market basket parking lot because my daughter falls asleep after swim. Um, and I just wrote a post about that experience and how I never thought I'd be sitting in a grocery store parking lot with my daughter. Um, but here I was and how bar instructor and beach body coaching had given me the flexibility to not be at the grocery store on my day off, but to be at the grocery store because that's just what we do on Thursdays. Um, so just really trying to figure out what's important and what might link with others. Um, and that was, that was my epic post, but I think it took me like 45 minutes to write. So don't take 45 minutes to write your post. Don't be a perfectionist. Don't procrastinate. Just put yourself out there um, and have fun with it. Questions, comments, concerns? You'll get quicker, but you know why I'm crying too is because you know what people, what everyone can't fully appreciate is literally where you were like two months ago. You know, like right before you decided to do this. Maybe not two months, but you know, like you were so afraid to even post. Oh that you worked out, you know, because of those comments from that girl. And right. I don't know, like you just literally kicked the door down. You know, that's how I can explain it. You just kicked the door down and we're like here to, I, I just loved this post. Cause you were like, you were like, you were talking to her, you know? Oh, Holly. Yeah. And Holly who represents, anybody else, you know, that would, that's in your head when you're trying to all the, you know, that's been holding you back that whole time. So it's just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can hit, um, you're great, Chrissy. You're great. You're all okay. great. <laughs> People have been chatting at me. I I'm pulling, um, I didn't even read all these. I'm sorry, you guys. I think if you hit, um, so I can share that document. I'll, sh um, oh, Mary, you said you'd, you'd send that to Ariel so she can share I can. The same. Yes, that'd be great. And um, I was in this training and I still haven't done the full thing and I need it. Like, so this is a thing too, like in Ariel, I bet you can attest to this. Like we, Ariel and I have been doing this for three years. And guys, you still hit points in your, in your business where you don't like, you don't know what to post or it's stale or, you know, you're not creative or something's in your head. You know, your mom says something to you. Your brother says something. Somebody says something to you and it gets in your head. And when you sit down to write those posts, you used to write so easily. Mm-hmm. 
that person is in your head and you think everyone thinks this or everyone, th you know, like even just like, I'm sick of taking selfies. Like I, I hate taking pictures of myself. I hate it. I actually hate it. But, um, I had like an aha moment today. Another coach asked me my advice because she was feeling something similar where she feels like she's just always talking about herself and was asking my advice if, you know, she's talking about herself too much. And I was like, no, from my perspective, you're killing it. Like your, your, your Facebook is awesome right now. Like you're sharing your story so vulnerably every single day is vulnerably a word. Anyway, <laughs> it's a crazy yeah. word, but you know, like, so I, I kind of had an aha moment where, you know, it's like the same feeling. She feels like she's just constantly posting these pictures of herself. But to me, I'm like hearing this vulnerable, genuine, uplifting, motivating story every day, you know? So you have to remember that. Like when I look at Haley Christian, I mean, we're like all following her at this point, I'm sure. You know, like one of her things is she's like, go in a, in a right place and take, laugh and take a picture of yourself every single day. Like that's key, you know, and then put it with your posts. And, um, I don't know. I'm sure like you guys have been there where you like, you, you go to take that selfie and you're like, Oh my God, if I have to make a goofy face in this freaking camera, like, you know, like you're looking at yourself alone in your car and trying to <laughs> be genuine and like take a picture. So it's, it is hard, but these things are what help with it. Like the personal development this method. And once you're doing it and you're getting the feedback, like Mary said, like, the high school friend that messages you that would never sit with you and tells you that you're killing it, you know, like it just keeps filling your cup and get that momentum going again. Um, and that's, that's a future post, um, not too distant future is the post about, um, the high school friends. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just because it, it's very meaningful to me and it's in, I just kind of, I mean, I feel like I've just done them <laughs> enough that I need to kind of tell them that they're pretty cool now. Um, and also in that group, they gave us a suggestion for I don't know what to post. So it's, um, do you guys, am I still sharing my computer with you all? Mm -hmm. So it's um, Raina Odell does it with somebody else. Um, but it's like an open group and you just have to ask to be a part of it. I haven't spent any time looking at it. Um, but I know that it's here to be helpful. So this is a good thing to look at too. Um, if you're kind of stumped with what should I post? That's all. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Chrissy. Thanks, Ariel. Thank you. That was like, um, that was great. You had me at PowerPoint. <laughs> You're just super supportive, Chrissy. Thank oh, you. PowerPoint. I was like, awesome. Oh, I love her. All right. So um, I don't think there were any questions. Does anybody have any questions and stuff? No, I think I hopefully will give some other people just some ammunition. And I think we all go through it. Like I've talked to you about Chrissy, like none, some of my family members are being pretty vocal or not understanding what I was doing, making me feel that I was very conceited and vain and all of this. And it kind of threw me for a loop with it being my family. And I, I took a step back. It kind of knocked the wind out of me, if you will. Um, but now um, I think just from sharing enough to show them that what I am doing makes a difference. Um, I no longer thinking of them when I make a post, I'm more thinking of the people that it's going to help, not the people that it, you know, the naysayers. So that kind of helps me. Like when I make a post, I'm not making it for them, I'm making it for other people that helped me out. But um, it's tough. It's tough when it's your family. That's for sure. When they don't understand, uh, when they don't get it. Um, but you, you have like two choices. Either you can kind of just say, screw you. This makes me happy. This makes me healthy. And one day you don't have to get it. You just have to respect it. That's it. 
you're not going to change everybody and it's tough when it's your family, but um, you just got to keep following your heart and just keep adding value and showing that what you're doing is a business, that you are changing lives, that you are helping people. And you know, your personal page kind of somewhat becomes a business and it makes it a little bit easier when you realize like, this is my business. Um, so I have to, you know, I'm, I'm reaching people, not, not my family that, you know, are going to say things. And that made it a little bit easier for me, but I kind of had to cut a little bit and push away a little bit and just keep doing me until they came around. Yeah. So, yeah. But thank you. Yeah, it was a great, great call. Thank you so much. You killed it, Mary. Yeah, go, girl. <laughs> All right. I have um, somebody lined up for us next week, too. Perfect. Um, so that will be. Also, Omega, bring in the heat. That'll be. <laughs> so you got June? Yeah, I know. All right, team, be relentless. <laughs> Get on your game. <laughs> we just, we had a girl hit. She's going to be official this week, but she's signed all coaches to hit diamond in five weeks. She signed yeah. up March 28th. Yeah, we need to talk to her. And we she need to talk to, to her. On Thursday. So she's going to be our. So yeah, she'll be her. next week? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So awesome. that's your gift for turning diamond fast. It's like, oh, well, now you have to talk yeah. to call and take it up a notch. <laughs> that's awesome. I can't wait. Um, hey, it's great. It's good to let other new coaches too. It gives yeah. them incentive. It lights the fire and everyone. It's, you know, I think we all want to see other people doing things. It, yeah. it will help us be like, all right, well, she can do it. Then I can do it. What the hell? And if anyone has anything that's like working for them and you want to, this is a great place to talk on the team call you know this mm -hmm. is a great place to start doing practicing that you know yep. speaking and all that yeah if that's your dream you yeah. want to be on the stage <laughs> i happen to know another stage you could come up yeah, on if you don't want to talk about it <laughs> you don't want to talk we have another we have lots of stage opportunities <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, i'll get you the you. recording Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Job. Great job, girl. Good night, everybody. Good night.